Heavenly Father, we ask that through your words you may touch us today. We need you, Lord. Help us to run. Continue to follow. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Today we are reading Hebrews chapter twelve. Chapter twelve. The whole book of Hebrews, uh, a letter of encouragement, of uh, exhortation. This is the climax of the whole book. All the exhortation that the author did was to prepare us for the chapter twelve and thirteen. So let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Continue to run. Verse one. Go towards the better home. Overcome all the、uh, obstacles on our way. I will divide it into four paragraphs of、uh, four things. Go to the end. Go to the heavenly Jerusalem. Ah,、uh, just like the pilgrim progress. The first thing. Look unto Jesus, the Author and Finisher of our faith. Do not shift our eyes. Do not shift our focus. Do not do not change direction. Continue to look unto Jesus, and at the end, we will be able to reach our heavenly、uh, kingdom. The second point is the、uh, verse four to eleven. How do we overcome all the obstacles on our way? We need to submit to the chastening of the Lord, so that we can be partaker of His holiness. Everyone who reached the heavenly Jerusalem, they will become saints on the way. Can we face our holy God with our filthy clothes? As we run this race, we will remove all a lot of our old clothes. We continue to put on our new,、uh, new be new clothes. Here we need to learn to submit and submit again. Our previous, our old thought. How we. Cling to Egypt, cling to the world. As we submit, we are able to lay it aside. It's a process. We all know about the ideas, but we are in the process. These things will happen in different times in different people. But we must hold on to our track. <laughs> When it's like Mario, but you need to win the game, just like Mario on his way. He has to overcome a lot of things, right? And keep submitting, keep obedient. The third paragraph, third paragraph. How can we run with endurance the race that is set before us? That's verse twelve to thirteen.、Uh, seventeen. Pursue, pursue peace with all people and holiness. We need to、uh, lend support from、uh, each other. You do not go on this pilgrim's progress by yourself. You cannot do it by yourself. We need someone to cheer us on, to、uh, spur us up. And we need to cheer people on and spur them on, and together we run the pilgrim's progress, and we support one another. Sec of the fourth paragraph is the eighteen to twenty. Now finally we reach the Mount Sinai, the city of the living God. That's the heavenly Jerusalem. 
So today, the author of uh, Hebrews spurred us up. What we are experiencing is temporal. Do not stay here. Continue to run. What is your direction? Where is your destination? And today in the Hebrews, it tells us clearly that's the heavenly city, not the earthly Mount Sinai, but it's the heavenly city. Not just the Mount of Law, but it's the place where all saints gather. And Jesus is our mediator forever. And during that process, Someone, they, they just, they reach it. When you reach the end of your earthly life, that's where you are. But some, they may encounter some great difficulty. Ha sickness, financial uh, uh, burden, or marital relationship. And here, the author of the book of Hebrews continue to follow, continue to run, and then, Put down, lay aside your feeble, uh, your feeble hands and feet. Once again, you need to continue and continue to run. I sh I'm going to show you a PowerPoint. I don't want you you just to hear some words. I want you to, with some visual aids, you will be able to understand more. It will become more vivid. The title is a Run with Endurance, the race that is set before us. Can you see in the PowerPoint, many angels, they are watching the pilgrims who are on this progress. They're, they are surrounding us like a cloud. I choose a modern picture, and it's an ancient one. We are running with everyone. And then in the church history, we are running with all the saints before us. Not our present day's journey. From the early church until now, everyone is still running. But the saints, they are in heaven now. And then in chapter 11 of Hebrews, there's the Hall of Fame of all the people. They are the cloud. They are the cloud of witnesses. They are spurring us up. Verse nine, uh, 39 and 40 of chapter 11. All these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Verse 39 and 40. All these, uh, the, you know, faith hero of Israel, those uh, in the early church, they have faith. They have run their race, but God say no, that's not complete. They are still waiting for us. They are spurring us up. So that we enter into perfection, then they will be perfect. That's the will of God. All these 2,000 years, that's what this pilgrim pilgrimage is about. from the Abraham, and then uh, 4,000 or 5,000 years ago, they have come to this hometown. Who are they waiting for? They're waiting for us. They're waiting for us and our next descendants. Every generation, it's like we take on the button, we keep on running. And now they are spurring us on in heaven. So Christian is not just about attending the service and we think that we are in this faith. Our faith is a journey from 
the past and then present and then the future. We keep we keep running. All these weaknesses us as cheer us on and then spur us on. So verse one to three. Verse one to three. How can we reach the end? Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He is our goal, and he is our motivation, and he is our role model. He's our example. We cannot finish this by ourselves. We will lose our direction. We will stay where we are instead of like、um, running this race. But Jesus, for our faith, the offer and the perfecter of our faith, give us the of the first faith, and then give us faith to last this journey, to give us faith that will reach our destination. We do need the, this high priest in heaven. This is the mediator of the better covenant. So we can follow God closely. There's a very important purpose of the letter of Hebrews to the early Hebrews in the early church, the Hebrews of the early church. So wherever Paul went, in whichever he went, first of all he will go to the synagogue of that place. Some Jews will turn to Christ because of him. These are the first fruits of the Hebrew believers, but they grew up in a Gentile environment. They are also affected by the Greek、uh, culture, and then they were under the persecution of the Roman Empire. And here, the author wrote to the Hebrew believers. From the letter of Hebrews, so he should be the first generation or first and a half generations believers. So take, for example, we take the offer as a、uh, Paul. It's controversial. We are not sure about this, but I just want to like put Paul as the offer for now, just for now. Paul wanted to write to them, to encourage the Hebrews, Hebrew believers, so that he may know all the difficulties he is going through. He encouraged them to look to Jesus, the Author and the Finisher of our faith. Verse one. Therefore, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. These witnesses were in the Old Testament. For the Gentile believers, they did not have such witnesses. Do you understand? In Greeks、uh, or other places, they came. They turned to Christ. These are the forefathers of Hebrews. But Paul wrote to them this、um, this、uh, example of the faith hero. These people who follow Jesus walk on the way of the faith journey. You are not the first batch. Many people have done that. Encourage them to lay aside, lay aside every weight, the sins which so easily and stay and snares. We all have the burden of、uh, lust, and for the Jews, they will have the burden of the legalism, all kinds of burdens. That's why when we run this race, it's so hard. And Paul said, "Lay aside all this burden, and then focus on your goal. Run with endurance the race that is set before us. You need to run with endurance." Because we will be discouraged. We will be distracted by many things. We will be distracted by many things. 
our attention will be drawn by many things. But we could get that we must continue to run the race that is set before us. L less we don't know where our destination is. So do we know our destination? Paul wanted to point out clearly this picture, the final destination for us all. In this journey, we continue to look unto Jesus in faith. How did he finish his race? Who, for the joy that was set before him, and drew the cross, despising the shame? So they have, we have this short-term and long-term goal before us. Endure the cross in order to receive the uh, eternal glory. How would, we, how would we choose? The early believers, they were persecuted and they fell. But it's a very important reminder here. Joy, joy that was set before him, and then he will reach the heavenly city, a city, and then he can endure all hardship. And now Jesus sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So Paul keeps telling us, reminding us that he had been, he has been through what we are going through. Paul want us to consider verse 3 he, consider him who endures such hostility hostility from a sinner lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls so Jesus suffered hostility from the high priests every day he performed miracles people were hostile to him when you saw a, a, a miracle, you used to say, oh, glory to God. But the Pharisee did not do this. Why did you heal the sick on Sabbath? By what authority are you doing this? Don't think that people will turn to Christ just because of miracles. People kept challenging Jesus, hostile to him. So Paul was encouraging all these Hebrew believers, do not be discouraged. You must consider you must look to Jesus. You need to remember, consider how he incur endured those hostility. The early Hebrew believers, their faith life was hard. They were all they were they were shown hospitality, they were challenged, they were questioned. But Paul said, Do not be discouraged. What should you do instead? Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We need to consider him who endured and became a son of man, how he carried our cross and, and fulfilled and accomplished the and redemption. Verse 4 to 11, the second paragraph, submit to God's uh, chastening so that we may father chastened uh, his son in order that the son will be like him will have the image of the father have the mind and forge of the father and the conduct and the behavior of the father to imitate the father but a lot of children grew, grow up fatherless A lot of uh, couples went through uh, a lot of uh, conflicts during divorce. A lot of mothers will hold on to their kids. I will not give up on my children. A child grew up fatherless will lose all the directions. But if a father was like not good, Maybe he did all the bad things, the father. He smokes, he drinks, he uh, goes to prostitute or he gambles. 
the child grew up with such a father will be bad too. But normally, as a normal father, all children need uh, discipline from the father because we are rebellious by nature. We like to do our own things. We like to choose for ourselves. We like the freedom. Our life is shaped or ch uh, like a chiseled. Our life is chiseled out. If you think about your father, what did your father pass to you? Because of this uh, discipline proceed, uh, process, your life is mold, is shaped. If we want to walk on this pilgrimage, we need uh, uh, the discipline from the Heavenly Father. Verse 10, For they indeed fulfill these chasteners as, as seem best to them. The earthly father seemed best to them. When my son was in the primary four, he said to me, now he's an adult, but when he was primary four, he told me, my dad, you can uh, beat me up, you can scold me, but do not lose temper on me. I was shocked. I was shocked that he told me this. If I don't lose my temper, why should I scold you or beat you up? It's not his problem. It's my problem, right? We discipline our children as we seem best. But how about our Heavenly Father? Verse 10. But he for our prophet that we may be partakers of his holiness. Verse, 11, verse 10. We're still on verse 10. These Hebrews believe a face hostility and then like uh, from the people. But we turn. These are the chastening of our Heavenly Father. We are Christians. Oh, okay, we have the heavenly city laid before us, set before us. Then we think that we are superior. But in our character... We still have a lot of earthly and godly um, attributes in us. But through conflict, through this, um, dilemma, God will mold us. God will shape our life. Are we more humble than others? Are we a peaceful and a joyful person? Do we resist our authority? In these conflicts, we see all these ungodly attributes in us. And then we ask God, why do you allow this happen? In order, he did it. He does it in order to shape our lives. When we are in like a um, relationship, conflict, we don't consider people as our enemies. Behind all these, there's the hand of God disciplining us, including our discipline, our authority, maybe it's our spouse. They are to point out what are the ungodly uh, things in our lives. When the Heavenly Father disciplines us so that we can be partakers of His holiness, after going through all the hardship, When we meet our God in heavenly city, and heavenly Father will say to us, my son, you are so much like me. There is my attribute in you. Today we can encounter each other. He is waiting for us. So the hardship on the way, we must see that. Just like verse 6, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens. His rod, his staff, disciplines us. In our conflict, conflicts, we have done wrong. He would rebuke us. We don't want to go to cell group because we don't want to be pruned by others. 
Does our cell leaders prune us? We know that there is something in us. If you have stayed in a cell group long enough, your cell leader will spot that. But if we reject this pruning, or we are discouraged when we are pruned, then the character as God's ch children cannot grow in us. Pruning is for our good, for our profit. So we must overcome our fear. We lack love and trust towards our authority, our cell leader. Sometimes I will become challenged. When I'm challenged, I am discouraged. When I'm discouraged, I want to leave. <laughs> Every one of us experienced that. But we also need to face our real self. We need to be thankful for those who are willing to challenge us so that the godly attributes may grow in us. If we try to dodge, we try to hide, How about the godly the attributes of the Heavenly Father will not be able to grow in me? If I have come to church for three years, five years, ten years, you have not changed? Because you have not been challenged. You have not been rebuilt. Your life is not open yet. And your life has not changed. Where well, thankfully, I went to another church to preach recently. I met with this female preacher. She said that my grandma, who is in her 90s, she has changed re-watching your morning devotions. She keeps changing and changing and changing. If we just change a little bit but not keep changing, we don't keep changing. We have not changed. That's not real. The real change is like continually, you'll be more and more like Heavenly Father. We don't stay at some point and then we stop changing. Third paragraph. In this process, we'll be more and more like our Lord, our Heavenly Father. Because we accept His chastening. Third paragraph uh, pursue peace with all people and holiness verse 14 so it's uh, this uh, third paragraph verse 12 to 17 pursue peace is pursuing holiness the nine fruits nine fruits of the holy spirit is just one fruit one fruit with nine aspects it's the same fruit. We have godly attributes. A peacemaker has godly attributes. Holiness is not ours. Holiness is God's. That's why we say holiness. Holy. Holiness. Holiness is unto God. But when we draw close to Him, we pursue Him, his holiness will come to our lives. However perfect we think we are, just like Isaiah came in God's temple when he faced God, he said, I am an unclean person. We are just so used to who we are. We don't know how low we are until we face this holy God. But there is hope in us. We pursue God. His holiness will come upon us. We repent. We continue to seek God's face. He will give us his um, part of him to us. Verse 12. Continue to uh, talk about this running the race. Strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. I list out eight things here. How do we run this race? 
What does it mean? Run with endurance. First thing, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Can you sit upright? Can you put down both of your knees? Can you relax your shoulder? Do not doze off. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> We need to be alert. You need to sit upright. That's the first thing. The second thing is verse 13. Make straight paths for your feet so that what is slain may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. How do you run this pilgrimage? How did the lame, how does the lame Run, make straight paths. What are we thinking? We have a lot of boxes. Mind fixed a mindset. We have fear. Every time when we reach certain point, we want to turn around, or we make a big detour. We don't want to talk to our authority. Then our way, our path is not straight. We don't want to face that confrontation. So we take a longer, winding path. But we can make our path straight, make straight paths for ourselves. We have a lot of restriction in our mind. A lot of the uh, boxes we give ourselves. We put a lot of condition in many things. So we put all these pretexts. Now, we can't, I can't do this, I can't do this. Okay, forget about me. I don't, I don't want to be part of it. Every time when we face challenges in life, we list out all the condition in our lives. So that our, our, our path is crooked. We cannot go straight. We need to make straight path. The third point, pursue peace with all people. It's not a way that, a path that you go by yourself. We can go far when we walk in peace. And then pursue holiness, fourth point. Uh, pursue godly attributes. Without holiness, no one can see God. Point five is in verse 15. Look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Look carefully. Oh, someone called a, a North European believer in 17th century. The religious faith at the time. Many people, uh, they were uh, like Christian when they were baby, right? They thought that they were saved. That's what the uh, the Western cultures, right? We, we, we christen babies. They are the. They grew. They grow up in Christian culture, but they do not have direct relationship with God. So this um, this person wrote a lot of critic to diagnose the Christianity at the time. You thought that they were you were a Christian, but you are only a Christian in your culture. You do you do not have relationship with God. You do not pursue God. You do not. We cannot see God's attributes in your life anyway. You are just acting like a Christian. Okay, you grow. You you were born in church. You grow old in church, and then and then you take communion, but your life is never changed. Less anyone falls short of the grace of God. We are just a, a, a Christians in culture. Our life is not changed. Whereas at the point six, less any root of bitterness springing up. Less anyone falls short. Three last here. Less anyone falls short of the grace of God. Less any root of bitterness. And then you compare with others. How come she has this and I don't? So we, we reject others. 
we cannot have peace with others because we live in vain glory. We are proud. We like to compare ourselves with others. We think that this is am I uh, this is I am entitled to this. So we complain against God. That's that's how the the roots of bitterness spring up. We need to continue to go on this race. We must learn to fix our eyes on Jesus. Do not compare ourselves with others. And by this, many become defiled. Verse fifteen: When we have the roots of uh, bitterness. Many will be defiled by us. So less, less any roots of bitterness springing up. Verse sixteen: Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. That's the seventh thing. We indulge on our fleshly desire. The eighth thing. Or profane person like Esau. We still lust about Egypt. Why is our eyes blurred? Forty years in the wilderness, led by God, they couldn't see it. There were pillar of cloud, pillar of fire. They had manna every day. Why couldn't they see God? Why were their eyes blurred? Because their hearts fixed on Egypt. They have a slogan, unspoken slogan. We turn to Egypt. We turn to Egypt. They could not see that God was leading them into the land, a promised land. We didn't. We couldn't see that we we are going into the heavenly city. We didn't see the heavenly Jerusalem, because we want to go back to Egypt. Our eyes are blind, are blurred. The syndrome is the profane, like um, lusting after the world. Now I want to mention about once safe, always safe. This concept. The salvation of Jesus Christ is all sufficient. He will do. He will cover us unlimitedly. That's from the angle of Jesus' redemption. But why would some people fall away? Why would someone not save? Not because of the redemption being imperfect, but it's our problems. Maybe I sin. Holy Spirit reminds me. The blood of Jesus, His life sacrifice for us, is all sufficient to cleanse us from all sins. But maybe to a point, we just、uh, we just think that we can rely on ourselves. We are so proud of ourselves. I say that I will just sin one more time and then I will return. But who can guarantee? Maybe even when the Holy Spirit reminds us, I refuse to be reminded. Maybe I will we check ourselves to a point that I don't want to go back. How can you tell you definitely can turn back? You can't. From God's God、uh, point of view, He can guarantee. Whenever you return, I'm right here waiting for you. This is the story of prodigal son. The father is always waiting there. No one can take away that relationship. But maybe one day the son wouldn't even want to go back. He cannot have the food、uh, for the pig. Pig. He didn't think about going back to God's、uh, father's house. He went further and further away that he could not come back. As long as he's willing to return, the redemption is all sufficient. God totally respects our free will. He will not force us. He will wait for us, but he will not force us. If God took this free will away from us, God wouldn't need to、uh, create, put this free will in us at the beginning. Just like our electric toy, you press the button. They say, "I love you." Press another button, Father, I adore you. Without freedom, there is no real love. God 
created man to give us freedom so that we may love him re in reality, in truth. So he has to take a great, great risk. What if I don't love him? He still has to let go. He has to respect free will to God, the original creation. He has prepared redemption, the path to go home. He knows we will stumble, we will make wrong decisions, we will make the wrong choices, but he has prepared everything so that we can go home. The fourth paragraph, come to the heavenly uh, Jerusalem, which is the city of the living God. You do not run by yourself. You do not run towards a goal, but you run towards Jesus. May, there are many angels surrounding Jesus. Angels, verse 22, but you have come to Mount Sinai, uh, innumerable, innumerable company of angels. Verse 23, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. All God's children, the firstborn, born were are waiting for us in heaven so when you reach there you will be overjoyed oh you are Augustine you are Martin Luther oh you are the pastor of a Hong Kong church I, I heard I, I have attended your gathering oh you are here you will be well inspired many are waiting for us for now we don't know them but to them, he knows, they know every one of us. They are the firstborn in heaven. That's our direction. That's our goal. That's our destination. Verse 18, for you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that may burn with fire that, and to blackness and darkness and tempest. Verse 18. There's Mount Sinai where God gave ten commandments. But God, for human understandings, they developed it into legalism. God gave him to us, a perfect God. But we turn it into perfectionism. But God is perfect. But he's not perfectionist. He loves us regardless. We don't need to go to Mount Sinai. The, the journey that we run. The heavenly Jerusalem. Verse 23 to Mount uh, Jerusalem. The, to, uh, the city of the living God. That's how the offer of uh, Hebrews encouraged that. Verse 22, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of uh, sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Abel's blood spoke from the ground, but the blood of Jesus is about glory. It's about praise. It's praising. Accomplishing redemption. Verse 25, it says that here, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. So the offer kept encouraging Hebrew believers. Verse 28, Verse 27 and 28, keep running, keep running. Now therefore, now this yet once more indicate that the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made at all things which cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 27, everything will be removed, the created beings. But verse 28, therefore since we have... Receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace. Unshakable. Where is this unshakable kingdom? Right here. 
innumerable company of angels, God's uh, first fruits, God's elders. They are encouraging us. They are inspiring us. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Strengthen the hands which hand down and the feeble knees. Do not be discouraged. Be not be frustrated. Keep running. The Heavenly Father is waiting for us. This is the eternal city, unshakable kingdom, where we know that we are walking on this way. Then we need to be thankful. Brothers and sisters, we are still on this journey. We need to encourage one another. And Paul is encouraging us run towards this heavenly city. Focus on God, Jesus. And lay, lay aside all the frustration, discour discouragement, and we run towards the Mount uh, Zion. Let's all stand and worship our God.
一系列的喜，并存盼望，奔跑我们前面的路程。有的喜，并存盼望，奔跑我们前面的路程。一系列的喜，并存盼望，奔跑我们前面的路程。Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. When we walk on this journey, we need to lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We want to go to the heavenly Jerusalem and the most holy place. Praise the Lord! God has led us step by step into His heavenly city. This journey, step by step, we must overcome. First of all, we need to thank God. Let's all speak out and thank God. Our authority wants to discipline us. Want to speak the truth to our lives? Maybe it's hard. It's not easy. We may be challenged. We may, but with a thankful heart, we thank God for all the authority who have spoken into our lives. Every reminder, we thank God. Let's all speak out and pray to God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you because you have sent many people in our lives and speak to our lives. Because you highly, you think highly of us. You want you 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 believe that we will be able to finish the race. So you send different people, especially our cell leader, to speak to us. Once again, we want to give you our thanks, even though is we have we face difficulty. But we know that when we are willing to accept this, we are able to walk past the bottleneck. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Two by two, let's share. You will just be reminded by anyone or everyone. You can share. Two by two, that you can overcome. Our life will not be weak anymore, and then we can pursue peace, pursue holiness, overcome all our fear.
Lord, we thank you because of your love. May you help us. We can pursue peace and pursue holiness. We do not lust after the world. We do not compare ourselves with others. We fix our eyes on you. In love and trust, we follow and we trust that our authority, our cell leaders, to prune us, to correct us, are for our good because we know that we love you. Our authority loves us. Our cell leader loves us. Brothers and sisters, we want to take a prophetic action. To represent that we walk on the pilgrimage, all co-workers come to the front. All co-workers, all co-workers, co-workers, <laughs> come close. Uh, just follow us. All co-workers come to the front. And we face the hall. So in the middle, that's the pilgrimage. And on the two sides, that's the worldly path, the world earthly journey. On earth, we are working, we are laboring, we have a lot of burdens. So later on, from your side, you go. You go from the two two ways, the earthly way. Your hands are hang hanging down, and then your feeble knees. But when we come from the middle, so、uh, hold hands with either your spouse or people of your same sex, okay? And together we run this pilgrimage. When we walk on this pilgrimage, so you need to run like me. We look towards the cross. Our our、uh, feet are up, and we're holding our the companion's hand, and then we walk towards. The front, and every coworker here are the great clouds of witnesses watching over you. Whatever the struggles you have, the angels of God are watching over you. The messenger, the angels of God will watch over you. Coworker, when you see the coworker, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, um, running. Then you need to clap your hands, cheer them on. Yep, encourage them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is a real situation in this in the eternal home. Now you bring to the a burden from the two sides. That's the don't walk on the middle one. The two sides with your burden. With your incapability, that、uh, you have feeble knees, and then you have、uh, limbs that are hanging down, hands hanging down. You are being disciplined, and you are upset. And as we walk on this journey, we lay them, lay them down, lay them down, lay them down. We wait for more people to, to run together. Now we run on this pilgrimage. Coworkers, cheer them on. We are that cloud, great cloud of witnesses. Yeah, lay the side, every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares. Oh, well done, well done, well done. Angels are cheering on, spurring you on. Don't go back to your seat. We worship our God. We stay in the front.
Well done, well done. Come to the front. Come to the front. Let's look to to the front, and imagine in a heavenly city. That's how we will worship our God. Yeah. Hallelujah! Together, we run. Together, we are not alone. We are not strength. We are not weak. Hold、uh, the hands of the neighbor and say to them, say to your neighbor, "Together, we run this pilgrimage. Together, we run this race." Tell your neighbors, "I need you." I need you. Tell your neighbors, Amen. I'm telling all online, our、uh, brother and sister watching online, we need you. We need to be together. At the end, I want to bless every one of you. Verse twenty-eight: the unshakable kingdom. Unshakable kingdom is in you. Is in you. We are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Verse twenty-eight. That's the theme of our forty days upcoming forty day fasting and prayer. Let's receive blessing, brother, heavenly Father. We thank you. You are the one who chastens us. You are our Father. You love us. That's why you chasten us, and through our authority, you speak to us. So that we may listen, and that we can obey. With people around us, brother and sister together, we run this pilgrimage. Your kingdom is in us; it's unshakable. We hold fast, and we fix our eyes, and then we run. So all who have run, who run before us, will receive the glory together, and will be made perfect, and then bless us with a joyful heart to run, with a hopeful heart we run, with and an, with endurance we run. This coming forty days, we together, we with endurance, with joy. Uh, with a heart to support one another, we run. Thank you in Jesus' name, Amen. That's the end of our morning devotion. We'll start our fasting and prayer next Tuesday. See you next week.